Good evening. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, this is a grand celebration, and uh, I'm very excited that you're here to share it with us. Uh, it took a long time in the, in the making, but uh, here we are. And tonight we recognize years of work, uh, the creativity and the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial activity that's gone on, uh, and some risk-taking, no doubt about it, uh, to fulfill this dream. Healthcare education expanded in New Bedford. Uh, we're on the cusp of an exciting adventure that will have a, a great impact on public higher education for years to come. It's my belief that uh, these private-public partnerships are the wave of the future. And uh, I want to thank uh, all the participants uh, who made this happen. It hasn't been easy. It's my honor to serve as president of this great institution, Bristol Community College. My name is Jack Spraga. And, uh, it's a bold step that we have taken to, uh, in order to provide the people of our region with badly needed services. Uh, uh, Health care uh, is one of the most critically important areas uh, for this community and for the country, for that matter. And uh, for us to be able to expand uh, the health care providers and health care services is a significant event for New Bedford and for South Coast, for that matter. Community colleges have long faced what I call a perfect storm. Uh, uh, we had uh, many qualified applicants on one side of the uh, uh, college, and on the other, we had plenty of openings and demand for uh, healthcare graduates. And we're the problem in the middle. We are the institution. Uh, uh, the example I always use is 1,000 applicants every year, not just one uh, year, but every year, 1,000 applicants for 72 positions. Uh, and you can imagine on the other side of the funnel uh, the health care uh, providers, the hospitals and uh, other services uh, demanding uh, more nurses and more health care providers. And we just couldn't uh, increase our capacity because of the, uh, of the enormous uh, price on our uh, uh, cost on our resources. So um, we have a high unemployment rate in this region, uh, literacy levels, uh, levels of educational attainment, those are all things that we need to work on. I always say I take those levels uh, personally because at BCC my job is to fix those levels and they are holding up our economic development and uh, the expansion of our workforce. So uh, we try to, uh, I stay up at night trying to figure out ways that we can increase that capacity and here you have before you just a wonderful example of that. I want to thank also the uh, entrepreneurial thinking of people in this room who helped us uh, and move forward. It has not been easy. Uh, you're going to hear from our legislators, from the mayor, from the Department of Higher Education, um, in addition to the funding that was necessary, the faculty at BCC, uh, the staff, the dedicated people who have uh, pushed this forward, and, uh, and now you see the fruition and what a lovely facility we have. Right now, we have 121 students enrolled in our general uh, in these in these programs, and uh, we're very ap uh, very uh, uh, proud of that. I mean, you consider we really didn't get started until July or August. We've been working on it a long time, but it, we didn't really get the green light, the final green light, until uh, 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 July and August. And so to have a you know quick turnaround and have classes start. Uh, just a few weeks ago is just tremendous. It's just a, a wonderful uh, testimony to the dedication. Not only are there 121 uh, students currently enrolled, but there are 90 more in the application pipeline and more and more will, uh, will continue as we roll out uh, programs over the next three years. Um, the uh, facility, if you haven't had a chance, there will be a tour afterwards, but uh, the facility incorporates the latest in uh, technology and learning resources uh, for our classrooms and for our labs. And of course, distance education plays a key component in this. And one of the particularly engaging elements of this program is that students know, don't need to be right here uh, physically, uh, uh, except for some lab uh, work, uh, because of the e health careers allow students to do much of their work online. And in this day and age, with the complexities of society, uh, single parents, uh, transportation, care at home uh, for elderly parents or for children, uh, it's, it really makes a demand on the students to come to college. And if we have a class on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 o'clock, 
that automatically lets out and excludes a number of people who can simply can't make that uh, at the campus. But if we have it online, uh, then we uh, uh, make the uh, flexibility, uh, the uh, accessibility uh, for them to adjust to their schedules. And I think it's going to be, a, as I say, a wave of the future, uh, not only uh, distance learning, which is growing exponentially at the college and across the country, but also private-public partnerships uh, here. And it is, uh, it is a celebration tonight. I mean, who comes to you in this day and age and says, here, take some millions of dollars, right? And nobody does that, except the people I'm, uh, person I'm about to introduce to you. Uh, and it's, it was his foresight and uh, great uh, skill in entrepreneurial activity that was instrumental. We simply could not have done this project without, uh, without uh, Jerry Cavanaugh. Uh, and Kavanaugh Software, as well as uh, the Princeton Review. Princeton Review, same people that brought us the SAT uh, tests that we all agonized over for many years. Uh, a very, uh, very uh, prestigious organization. And uh, I wanted to say up front as well, that because I know there's been some uh, murmurs to the contrary, but all of these courses are BCC courses. They are uh, controlled by BCC. They are taught by our faculty. Uh, the Princeton Review is a, a supporting network. They have come uh, like a, a bolt out of the blue to help us expand that capacity, and they are not interested in interfering in any way with the academic uh, process. They, they always have said, uh, Jack, it's up to you to run it as a BCC course. We only want to support, and that's what's happened. So it's my honor uh, to introduce to you my pleasure and a uh, uh, a great uh, friend as well as a professional colleague, Mr. Jerry Cavanaugh. Jerry Cavanaugh. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, Jack. Thanks for that introduction. Um, most of you know that I grew up in this town, grew up playing on the elevators in the old Keystone Building and hanging around on Union and Purchase Streets. But what's most in, more interesting is, is that's not why we're here. We have the honor of having Commissioner Freeland with us. And I will tell you and him that we spent months traveling around the country, going to different cities and different states, talking to different higher ed commissioners. Mike Perrick and I spent six to eight months doing that and decided that we would be best served in Massachusetts and in New Bedford. And that is because of Jack Sprague and the people that he has around him, both in New Bedford and Fall River. They deserve a great round of applause. <laughs> this facility here, and please uh, take a look at it before you leave, it's a fabulous facility. This facility is here because of, not because of Kavanaugh Software or the Princeton Review, it's because of Jack Sprague, Terry Romanovitz, David Feeney, and all of the great people who serve this institution. And the further we go in this process, the more that we realize the high quality of all the people who actually are affiliated with it. Because this was not an easy process. There were a lot of substantive, quality questions that got thrown our way before we were allowed to do this. Commissioner Freeland's office, the accrediting agencies, the college itself, legislators at the State House, and we had to answer every single one of them before we were allowed to move forward. But this is a great enterprise because we know that there are 100,000 new jobs to be created in allied health. And you know what happens now in some, for some of those jobs? They import people from China, the Philippines, India, Canada, in order to fill those jobs. Well, now we will be able to train our students for all of those jobs. And because of Commissioner Freeland's work and because of Jack Sprague being willing to go first, we will also be opening facilities just like this in three other cities in 2011. So with 100,000 new allied health jobs, we will be able to train almost half of those people to make certain that they are local people taking those jobs. And I am thrilled 
to be a party to this. The students here, we have some students here, I believe. The students here are extraordinary. They are just regular people who are willing to make that extra effort to get a better degree so that they can provide better for their families. And we are here only to try to help them do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Uh, He's absolutely right about the students. We should be, uh, 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 we're the ones who should be applauding and applauding the students for their wonderful uh, efforts and their uh, entrepreneurship themselves and taking a chance for this. Uh, they see a, a brighter pathway for themselves and we're, we're, that's why we're here. Uh, accessibility and affordable education and uh, of course of the highest quality. I would uh, also like to say that uh, uh, we had very, lengthy conversations. Uh, Jerry mentioned some of the people and some of the uh, uh, offices that we visited as we prepared uh, the way for this uh, program, and that's as it should be. We want to be very careful and it's uh, tightly controlled and, uh, and it is, uh, uh, there are no questions about the integrity of the process and that's why we were so, we were willing to go anywhere. We went to uh, uh, New England Association of Schools and Colleges. We went to their headquarters in Bedford. We went up to the uh, Boston uh, for the uh, Department of Higher Education on a number of occasions. Individual legislators uh, we went to visit, uh, the mayor, uh, all uh, faculty meetings at the college, and uh, it was all uh, a wonderful experience because it was an enlightening for people who came, and frankly, some were skeptical and we had interviews with newspapers and whatnot. But the idea was it's a pure, this is a pure program and it's going to be a, a, a wonderful boon for uh, the economic development of uh, downtown uh, New Bedford and the, re the whole city and the whole region as well. Uh, and uh, those careful com conversations had to take place. And uh, it's my honor now to introduce to you uh, the commissioner of higher education who ensured uh, not only that those conversations took place and that the hard questions were answered, but has been very supportive all along uh, for this. He immediately grasped the significance uh, as in my first conversation with him about this. Uh, and uh, it's been an honor to work with him. Uh, I hope you will welcome uh, the Commissioner of Higher Education, Rich Dr. Richard Freeland. Thank you, David. Thank you very much, Jack. It's, uh, it is really a pleasure after so many weeks and months of discussion and uh, working with the, the college and working with, with others interested in this to be part of this occasion tonight and to celebrate the opening of this, uh, this fabulous new facility. And I want to extend my congratulations to uh, Mayor Lang and to Senator McTigney and also to Jerry Cavanaugh and, of course, to, to Jack Sprague and all the people here at Bristol Community College for seeing this thing through and making it happen and bringing us to this, uh, this really very, very joyous moment. You know, community colleges do a lot of different things, and some people worry that we ask them to do too many different things, and we probably do ask them to do too, too many different things, but this facility that we're talking about tonight brings together so many of the wonderful things about community colleges. Uh, these institutions are about making opportunities available for young people who might not necessarily have other places to turn if they weren't here. Uh, this facility is going to open doors, as Jack said, as Jerry said, is gonna open doors to young people into one of the largest employers, employer industries in Massachusetts, one of the greatest growth industries in the country, one of the most exciting areas in terms of technological and scientific development uh, where, where the future for those young people is going to be limitless. Uh, and so this very much serves the mission of creating opportunity for young people. Another mission of community colleges is to help the state address its workforce needs. This is a state that lives and dies by brain power. This is a state that needs to make sure that our young people are coming out of school, coming out of college, prepared to meet the workforce needs of today and tomorrow, not of yesterday. This is, this is a facility which is addressing 
those needs, an up-to-the-minute facility to help young people in this region move into the greatest growth industry in Massachusetts right now, where we have had significant work workplace shortages in the recent past. One of the great concerns I have as commissioner is that we are not necessarily able to feed this healthcare industry to the extent that we should. This facility is going to help us address that. Another role of community colleges is to serve communities. They are called community colleges for a very good reason. They're here to help local communities flourish. New Bedford is a part of, the, part of this state that all of us want to see strengthened and revitalized and achieve the kind of glory that it has had over the, over the splendid history that, uh, that this city represents as it tries to reinvent itself and reinvent itself again to keep its economy consistent with the opportunities and demands of the present and of the future. And here is Bristol Community College right in the middle of New Bedford saying we're here to play our role in that process. We're here to help New Bedford recreate itself in a 21st century context. So you see wonderful coming together of different parts of the mission of community colleges here in ways that are just so joyous to be a part of. And, and we're here because Jack Spraga and Jerry Cavanaugh and the other people at Bristol Community College were ready to push the envelope a little bit. And Jack is right. When he came to me with this idea, I said, you know something, that sounds like a great idea. But what I didn't tell him is, you know something else, this idea kind of scares me. Uh, because there are, there are dimensions here, and the senator was on the phone with me. <laughs> I told the senator that. Uh, because it's pushing the envelope. You know, there's a saying in, in higher education, which handed down to us from a me medieval university, coined by one of the great leaders of Oxford University in the 16th century. He said, the premise of higher education is never do anything for the first time. <laughs> well, here we were being asked to do something for the first time, and we were asked to do a public-private partnership, and we're asked to sort of mix private sector, entrepreneurial, profit-making, God help us, private-making enterprise with the public service mission that we are part of. And how do we keep this appropriately disentangled, the different missions of the different players involved? How do we make sure that the public interest is properly uh, addressed? Uh, how do we make sure that we don't use public resources for private gain? How do we reassure those who are going to be asking us those questions that all these issues have been properly addressed? And so Jack did indeed make his way to Boston many times, and we had our general counsel working on it. But uh, we worked through it with great patience. Uh, and, and the truth is it was appropriate because we have now created a model which we will be able to replicate. And already in Massachusetts, other community colleges are saying, hey, we want to be part of this too. We want to do this too. You guys have paved the way. Now, as Jerry Cavanaugh said, we can roll it out in other communities with other institutions. So there is so much to celebrate here today. The mission of this college being affirmed, the leadership of Bristol being affirmed, the entrepreneurial and creative energy and adventurousness of this community, and above all, new opportunities for young people and people of all ages in this great city and a new dimension of the future for New Bedford. All things to bring joy to all of our hearts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Phelan. You should know, I mean, he's come all the way down from Boston as a supporter of this program. He had a long day today, and here he is. Uh, and uh, we're very grateful for him to take the time to come here. He made clear, you know, we, as he mentioned, we met not only with him, but we met with his legal experts and his uh, financial experts, his academic experts in the Department of Higher Education, because he made a, uh, the things that he was just talking about is a very important point that our next speaker uh, also made clear. Uh, and Senator Montigny would, he was right, right on this from the very start, and he would say, Jack, you know, a lot of people are going to be looking at this because it is different. We don't, uh, we don't like change in, uh, in higher education, uh, so you can imagine the commissioner's reaction when I first went up, if I got an idea for you, uh, but he was wonderful, and, and as, as is our next speaker, as, is all, as are all the speakers tonight. But uh, the senator would make clear to me that uh, everything had to be exactly right, and, he would, and we agreed with him uh, uh, because there were a lot of eyes looking at this project, and, uh, 
you know, when, when you talk about a uh, prophet, uh, could not be a very uh, a happy word in some people's minds. So uh, when you have private entities uh, and marrying with public entities, there are naturally eyebrows raised and questions will be asked. And Senator Montigny made sure that we, uh, and walked us through every step that we had to go through uh, very carefully, very patiently, very thoroughly, uh, so that there was no uh, stone left unturned. And uh, I'm very grateful to him for his great support. And you can see how supportive he is by being here tonight. So it's my honor uh, to introduce to you uh, Senator Mark Montigny. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Uh, there's nothing more difficult than a disconnect between a speaker behind the podium and his or her audience. And the disharmony is that I have so much to say, and I want to say it uh, passionately, and you probably have so little patience to hear most of it. So that's the, uh, the, the, the disconnect. <laughs> um, it is such an honor to, uh, to stand here. Um, I look out through the audience. I want to be careful because if I start mentioning some of the pioneers uh, like uh, uh, Mr. Bennett and others who had faith in downtown years ago, uh, I'll leave someone out. But it makes me think back, uh, I think of Jerry Cavanaugh. He and I had a very similar but uh, 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 a completely uh, different experience at the Keystone Building. He was working every day for his uncle and father promoting commerce. We as kids were causing mischief and constraining commerce. So this is penance. Developing downtown New Bedford for me is almost penance from the days that we would, when asked to leave salt marshes, we'd go through the side door at the Keystone over to the Star Store. Um, and, and who would it be but Bob and Morris Salt Marsh, who years later would call and remind me of all the fun. They were, they were so tolerant of uh, uh, New Bedford kids. Of course, our parents were wisely shopping there and spending money, so it was all, the mischief was all in fun. But it was people like Bob um, and Mora and the Bennetts and Elaine Lima and others who long ago, when all the storefronts were empty, all the second and third floors in the buildings were not only empty but in disrepair. Uh, there was no BCC, there was no Star Store, it had been closed, and if anything, it was an impediment literally dragging down the rest of downtown because the few entrepreneurs here that wanted to invest had no intention of spending money, talk about sunk cost, pouring good money uh, after bad, when there's a 120,000 foot structure in the core that in any day um, could be uh, uh, on fire or, or uh, you know, the, the, the center of whatever vandalism comes to major buildings in disrepair. Well, a funny thing happened. A very small group of people, mainly um, what I call our artistic entrepreneurs, it was people who recognized New Bedford for what it has always been, and that is a fabulous arts and cultural community, more theaters per capita than any city in the world. I mean, we love to quote how um, there were more millionaires per capita in this city than anywhere in the world. I think it's just as exciting and, in fact, reflective of that statistic that there were also more theaters than anywhere in the world because it's always been this fabulous, um, arts and cultural community centered in the downtown. But a funny thing happened. The world changed. The economy changed. The suburban malls took over. The, the uh, mistake made on, on covering Purchase Street. A lot of bad things happened in, in downtown and, and the city with it um, went into some disrepair. But then something happened in the 90s and people said, some, several people said, um, with a little bit of vision, a lot of taxpayer money, and there was risk there, particularly for those of us in public office who were selling it to our taxpayers, that if we build it, in this case the Star Store, uh, they will come. But it wasn't just that. It was spending millions of dollars to seed all of the arts organizations, like the Art Museum and the Whaling Museum, and literally saving the Zyterian Theater and creating AHA and artworks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In the end, it was the artsy types it brought downtown New Bedford back, but it would not have worked if there wasn't a vision that included and particularly driven by Jack and Terry and others. And here's why. And I know as the uh, drafter of the legislation for Star Store, the plan was always to use the cachet that came with arts and culture because it really does bring with it tremendous private investment. But if you don't have lots and lots of people, entrepreneurs still can't invest because they can't pay their debt service. So we had this little side plan that you've heard much less about. You always hear about the Star Store. 
you particularly hear about the leadership of the university. The irony is that even the chancellor at the time, Peter Cressy, was skeptical about our Stastor project. Only Peter could say, gee, Mark, thank you for offering me a $20 million building, but does it come with a $10 million endowment? Jack Sprager took the exact opposite. He literally was there to fight for every square foot he could get, and he delivered exactly what he promised. He said, the difference is, although the star store space is unique, we will bring the kind of bodies, the numbers of students, and two things happen from that. First, we will educate almost exclusively New Bedford, Greater New Bedford, South Coast students. The university is a wonderful thing, and it brings in students from all over the world, and that's a good thing. But what BCC does much better on much bigger numbers is take New Bedford residents, residents from the surrounding towns, educate them, and they stay here. Did a second thing, and that's why No Problemo is where it is, and that's why this beautiful Korean restaurant is where it is, and that's why down the street Cafe Bellina is there, and I can name most of the places as a bachelor that I eat at most nights. Downtown New Bedford isn't coming, it isn't getting there, it isn't arriving, it isn't growing, it isn't getting uh, to be something nice. It is the nicest small downtown in this country. After this, since that sounds hyperbolic for a cheerleader and a politician to say, after this, please come tell me. Compare a naturally beautiful place like this that's as thriving as this downtown, and I'll challenge you to give me a name and show me that I'm wrong, because we'll visit there next week to find out what they're doing so we can even do a better job here. But let me conclude with this, because I think the accolades to Jerry uh, and the mayor and the commissioner, and particularly Jack and his staff, are um, worth repeating. It's impossible to exaggerate. In the end, what BCC has done, and this is just the next expansion, it's been doing it for years and now over a decade, what BCC has done is given us the numbers to make sure the private investment follows the seed money. Downtown New Bedford would not have worked without that. The entire vision, I was there and helped develop the vision and then legislated that vision and then spent about $40 million of your money, our money. It would not have worked without BCC, more so than the university, bringing in now, what, 1,700? With, with this program, what are we, close to 2,000? Students that every day go to the Celtic Coffee House and the Green Bean and after work uh, and study, they go to uh, No Problemo. They, head over to restaurant after restaurant, um, and this is just the latest chapter. What's so exciting to me about this is we're in a, we're, we are in an economic crisis, as you know, um, much bigger than this city, much bigger than the state, much bigger than the nation, but it very significantly and adversely is affecting our ability to fund even current higher education programs. So it's particularly exciting for me that I get a twofer. I get another ex extension to this fabulous place that educates our constituents, that develops downtown and justifies the, the 40 million plus investment. So it makes us prove that it was well worth it and there were years when we were fingers crossed, storefronts empty, nobody living uh, in downtown. Those fights are over, but we need to continue to develop new and innovative programs to get to the next phase, to tie in Route 18 and do the same thing to the waterfront, which we will do. It doesn't work in this climate without a public-private partnership because I can't come to you and say, don't worry, in the next capital bond, I will do X, or in the next operating budget, I'll do Y. Uh, what I can do is work with these folks to say that there's a way to promote a government policy goal with a private sector funding source and a fabulous thing happens at the end of that. Not only do we get what we need for downtown, I'm happy to see Jerry and his, his uh, folks make money off it. That's good. That's a good thing because they'll come back and invest more. And with them, there'll be people flying into this town as they're doing every day because people downtown are making money. They're making plenty of money, and that's a good thing because more will come tomorrow. So I'll close by telling you how, how proud I am to, to have worked with you folks. Uh, for years, not for months, not because of e-health, but because of over a decade of commitment down here uh, that has paid off to the point where those of us who were for a long time defensive about uh, this downtown now don't even have to debate it. It has arrived. It is fabulous. If you're here for the first time, walk around. Uh, you will be struck 
by the beauty of the architecture, by the number of, of arts and cultural facilities, and by the number of five-star restaurants. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Senator Mark Martegui, a great supporter. You know, uh, he was instrumental in uh, uh, providing for Bristol Community College to be in the Star Store. As he said, we had a fight for every foot uh, uh, that we got there, and uh, we had a great partnership with the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth and Chancellor Gene McCormick. Um, I remember calling uh, Senator Montigny's office when we hit 500 students. We have 500 students at the Star Store, then 1,000. And now, over the year, we already have 2,000, uh, not in one semester, but uh, uh, unduplicated. So we're up over 2,000, and this will be another 20, uh, 200 or so for uh, his vision. I mean, he saw right away what would happen with the Star Store, and, uh, and it has happened. And uh, I should point out also uh, that he is instrumental. We are now on the bond bill. Uh, I mean, I don't know how long it'll take, but uh, we wouldn't be there if it weren't for him uh, for, with a $20 million dollar um, uh, earmark, I guess if that's the right word, a $20 million allocation uh, set for Bristol Community College for a downtown campus. And it wouldn't have happened without Senator Montigny being available uh, and right behind us and right for us. We're working on that bond bill now, but first the state economy has to recover a little bit. <laughs> no, no, you're right, that's a bad word. <laughs> But uh, very supportive, and uh, I'm very grateful to him. And as I am to our next speaker, uh, again, uh, the downtown economic development. Um, I see Mr. Bennett here, and we received an award from Downtown uh, Inc. Uh, for the great economic uh, work that we provide uh, for downtown. Diane Arsenal is here somewhere as the downtown current uh, director. Uh, but we continue to work as uh, uh, Matt Morrissey and Tony Sapienza and the uh, New Bedford Economic Development Council. Len Coriati is here with the uh, Greater New Bedford Workforce Investment Board. So we're, we're moving ahead in partnership with the Career Center and New Directions, and uh, uh, it's just wonderful. Early this morning, 8.30 this morning, we had a graduation ceremony on Union Street for uh, Stepping Stone graduation. It included the partnership of UMass, uh, New Be uh, the uh, New Bedford WIB, uh, uh, and also the Career Center, and uh, uh, the sustainability training that we did with Bristol Community College. So we started this morning, celebrated in New Bedford, and we'll continue uh, here all day. Um, our next speaker, as I say, he is another great supporter, and we wouldn't be here without him. We wouldn't have been here without any of these three uh, people uh, providing us through the rough weather and uh, taking us, uh, navigating us through. Uh, I can tell you a quick story about uh, Mayor Scott Lang. Uh, as mayor-elect, before he took office in December, uh, he came, uh, we tried to pay a courtesy call to him. We didn't try. I thought it would just be a courtesy call. We, we would uh, introduce ourselves and uh, Dean Terry Romanovich and myself, and uh, we told him how badly we needed more space, and he put on his coat. It was in December night, and we started walking around and knocking on doors. Uh, Have you have any space for rent or anything like that? And I knew we had a great, <laughs> we had a great champion in, uh, in this person, and he has been that way ever since. And uh, we never have a conversation in all of these years without him saying or me saying something about another downtown uh, uh, space for Bristol Community College and to get that workforce development moving. But this project, again, uh, as soon as I spoke to him about it, he uh, instantly grasped the significance of it, the long-term uh, effects of it, and uh, like the commissioner and like the senator, he has just been a stalwart champion for Bristol Community College and, of course, for New Bedford. And it's my honor to introduce to you the mayor of New Bedford, Scott Lang. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I, I just have a, a few remarks. I've enjoyed listening to the speakers and certainly uh, endorse everything that they have said. I want to thank the commissioner specifically and publicly because when uh, Jerry and Jack first came uh, to the mayor's office, which was back two years ago, it was very clear that this was a very unique proposal, completely out of the box, something that had not been contemplated before, which in essence was marrying this uh, private educational institution with a public one. And the private one came with a tremendous amount of largesse. And the public one came with a tremendous amount of credit and credibility in our area, which was BCC. And Princeton Review uh, forged ahead on this under Jerry's leadership. And I know he had, uh, I think it was Mike Perrick, who is, is a Princeton Review uh, contact in this. But I, I have to tell you that Jerry 
uh, many, many times we discussed uh, how you how you come over uh, uh, and overcome some of the real obstacles regarding uh, being wed to the status quo, which is, which is something the status quo is. We have 72 nursing spots. We have 1,000 applicants. We put together a waiting list. UMass Dartmouth has a great wait, uh, nursing school. They have a great waiting list. Uh, we have no way uh, to break through that waiting list with state resources at this time. And by way of this marriage, by way of the marriage between uh, the vision that Jerry had coming back to New Bedford with Princeton Review and, and Jack's real uh, leadership in this from the educational uh, circles, and then the commissioner who, who uh, uh, embraced this and understood the importance of uh, uh, trying something that uh, provided the best of all worlds, the, the know-how of Princeton Review and their, and their tremendous resources and a uh, great community college. So it, it's, it's worked out. I'm glad it's a model for other areas. I'd like to see it used here in, uh, in other ways, and I'm sure that Jerry, if there's any way he can, will continue to bring break, great projects to the city. What this does, though, that is extremely important, it allows you to uh, come to the uh, e-healthcare, well, the school of e-healthcare e careers at BCC, and that's what I'll call it, the school, as, as, as we're beginning to set up these different departments throughout BCC that perhaps will be public-private partnerships. It allows you to begin to learn and begin to work and, and learn online and also learn hands-on here, but uh, work and work your way through uh, your college, your, your, your uh, uh, associate's degree, your foundation work that you need, that if you want to become uh, a nurse, a nurse practitioner, uh, a doctor, an administrator, uh, someone who's involved in uh, the technical aspects of medical care. So it gives us the, the ability right now to take people who normally would be on a waiting list and begin to train them in the career that they want to, that they want to go into and reach the highest limits. Uh, the, the idea that you can uh, uh, begin to get your basic skills, get some, uh, some work under your belt, go online, continue to earn your credits, come back in for your labs and, and lectures that you might have to, is just uh, something that we talk about but we haven't been able to implement, and this implements it, which is very important. The other thing that I think is, uh, is very important about this program is that it, it, uh, we have an educational quarter developing here in New Bedford. And it starts, it starts at uh, College of Visual and Performing Arts, the great uh, UMass Art School, which, which merged at one point with Swain, which had merged with BU Artisanry uh, Master's Program. So we have one of the finest art schools in the, in the country tied into our university. Then we have BCC. Then we have a, a situation where BCC started out with a small toehold in New Bedford, and we expect BCC to have a major campus here in downtown New Bedford, and you can see it's growing piece by piece. Then if you look around the rest of this downtown area, you have other educational institutions that perhaps, perhaps aren't giving out accreditation, accredited uh, credits at any given time, but it's uh, the research and the opportunities apprenticeship programs at the Whaling Museum or the Buzzards Bay Coalition or the Explorium or looking at, looking at our art museum or our library or the Whaling Museum's library. And before you know it, slowly but surely, or the opportunities at the Z, you can get a full life's uh, career education by working your way through the different organizations that we have that are educational edu uh, organizations as well as perhaps quality of life type of enhancers. This particular subject matter, though, is so important because we are developing a tremendous health care corridor in New Bedford and Southeastern Mass. So this isn't as if we're training people to be dairy farmers and the next thing you know, we've got to figure out where they're going to go. They're going to stay here. Every time we go to any kind of, any kind of uh, uh, job uh, prediction for the 21st century, and all of us have been there, it comes down to health care. And it comes down to jobs will be opening up for highly specialized health care technicians, providers, uh, administrators, whatever it might be. So you look in Fairhaven now and you see the great uh, cancer center that, that uh, South Coast Hospitals, we, we know it here as St. Luke's, is uh, partnering with right now. We have St. Luke's, you have Toby, you have Charlton, you have St. Anne's. We know that St. Anne's was just bought by, uh, uh, Caritas was just, uh, was just sold and is, is going to be a for-profit. They expect to invest a tremendous amount of money 
in, in technology and partnerships. We hope to have teaching ho hospitals once again uh, be developed in this city. Then we have the privates, whether it's Hawthorne or whether it happens to be Greater New Bedford or the Greater New Bedford Healthcare Center. There are so many opportunities for these students to jump out and get that work experience and begin earning a living. So we're not supporting them while they're going to school. To the contrary, they're bringing tremendous value to our community, enhancing our quality of life and our, our health in our community, which means our health care costs will go down. I mean, the whole thing, if you look at it and really chart it out, uh, this, is, this is the brilliance of the 21st century by a number of pioneers that sit here before you who decided, let's change the model. 72 is not cutting it. You know, 135, 140 is not cutting it. Let's change the model. Let's open this wide. So I love this. I love the idea that we're on a fra fast track career path uh, with, this, with this particular program. The idea that we bring in 2,000 new people into our city every day who use our services, who will love New Bedford and, and stay here, have families, grow here, is just another added bonus. But everything that we do day in and day out is based on educational attainment. Because without education, we, we do not have that key to success for the 21st century. We will get a campus in, in, uh, in New Bedford for Bristol Community College. We'll rely on, on Jerry and his uh, uh, ingenuity. We will rely on, on uh, Dr. Sprague and his leadership, the commissioner who wants to push this forward. And Mark Montigny is the chair of the bond, uh, the uh, committee on bonding for, uh, uh, for the uh, Senate. And Tony Cabral who also chairs the committee. And I want to recognize Al Medeiros, who was here for Tony Cabral and all the legislators, uh, John Quinn, Steve Canessa, and um, uh, Tony Cabral, as well as Bob Cazera, were involved in this uh, enterprise along with the senator. And then our, our city council, certainly very supportive. And I know we have Steve Martins here from the city council, who also works in career development and workforce investment. He knows exactly what this is all about. Got a great team behind this. I'll throw one kudo out. I know the newspaper jumped on this very early and supported it, and that's important. Newspaper is a great public opinion formulator, and, and I can tell you on issues like this, on education, they're smack right on, uh, on point, and it helps. It helps bring this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of community uh, solidarity regarding education. So we love this project. Thank you very much. I can't wait. The second floor is coming soon. Then Jerry, Jerry and Jack will be looking at a third floor. We're going to continue to knock on doors and, and, uh, and look at holes in the ground to figure out where this BC campus is going. And uh, we will be another ribbon cutting with a full BCC campus before long. So thank you, Jack, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, what a pleasure. Uh, the mayor uh, mentioned, and I wanted to also acknowledge the uh, great work of uh, Representatives uh, Cabral and Canessa and uh, Cazera and Quinn, uh, right behind us all a step, every step of the way. And uh, Councilor Martin, I want to thank you, Steve Martin, uh, BCC alum, right? <laughs> thank you very much for being here. Um, there are many people, as you can imagine, uh, uh, in the undertaking of this scope uh, that I simply can't read all of their names. I'd like to ask all the... Uh, BCC faculty and staff, if you would raise your hand just to be recognized. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Dedicated people. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the computers had to be put in and uh, the distance learning formats and tracks had to be established and all of the various uh, uh, nitty gritty activities that, take, that it takes to uh, put together uh, an, uh, an undertaking like this. I do want to particularly mention uh, uh, D uh, Dean uh, Terry Romanovich of our uh, campus, Dean Romanovich. Uh, she's been the dean since the start and has grown it to 2,000 students and was instrumental in getting our e-health program underway. Also, our uh, chief academic officer, Vice President Sarah Garrett. Sarah? <coughs> And our Vice President, David Feeney. David, up there. Say hello, David. <laughs> well, we're very happy about that. And uh, just two deans I want to particularly mention, uh, uh, Pat, Pat Dent, Patricia Dent, and Peter Schuyler, if you would raise your hand. Well, we've been holding classes here for about a month. I was able to come every night that the classes started to, I call them all pioneers, uh, and they are, where they're taking a great risk and, and moving forward, a great chance on BCC, but you don't take a chance on BCC. We're gonna make it work, and, uh, and I told them that as well. Uh, we have a number of speakers. Uh, I'd like to have a, you know, we're gonna have a little ceremonial ribbon cutting. 
I have uh, mementos for our four speakers uh, as well uh, to uh, uh, commemorate this great occasion. It's the first of many. I suspect that uh, Commissioner Freeland will be going to three or four other similar openings uh, in the next year or so uh, across the Commonwealth. But uh, always, he'll always have this to remind him that we were first at Bristol Community College. Um, also, uh, as we leave, uh, we're going to, as I say, we're going to have the ribbon cutting, but as we leave, uh, the cer official ceremony, remember there are tours available. Uh, I hope that you will um, uh, be able to uh, take advantage of it and see some of the, uh, some of the great facility that we have. Uh, the bookstore is open uh, if you'd like to uh, uh, go in, buy a book or a, or a sweatshirt. I also wanted to acknowledge the uh, presence of our uh, a uh, fabulous uh, member of our Board of Trustees, uh, Cynthia Rose. Cynthia, thank you very much for your support. New Bedford native, right? <laughs> and a great supporter of New Bedford. Well, if uh, I could invite the four speakers uh, to come with me now, and we'll have a ceremonial ribbon cutting, and then uh, please enjoy the food. And uh, I want to thank La France Hospitality for the great food. And uh, please enjoy. And thank you very much for coming. Yeah.